So I finally got around to playing Shadow of the Tomb Raider since it was on Xbox Game Pass, which, side note, is actually a hell of a deal. I didn't play it at launch due to a couple of factors such as finishing college, having a back-breaking backlog as it is, and honestly just not really being all that interested in it. And don't get me wrong, I absolutely adore the 2013 reboot. It's a tightly paced game with amazing action, puzzles, and a story that does a decent enough job to give you forward momentum. Thanks to its emphasis on gameplay, I've come back to replay it time and time again over the years. Uh, another side note, this reboot series is really obsessed with torture porn. <laughs> It was a return to form for the action-adventure genre after Uncharted 3 started to bring its own franchise down the walking simulator path. Which, once again, don't get me wrong, I love those types of games. Danganronpa is one of my favorite series and it's 99% talking. But injecting the slower pace into an action game just kind of leaves an uneven juxtaposition of an experience. Another reason for not immediately jumping in was Square Enix, the publisher, cutting the price down shortly after release. While this can be perceived as the company not really having faith in the quality of their game, it mostly just comes down to wanting to push their ridiculous sales expectations. For someone with tempered expectations as it was, I just saw the writing on the wall and chose to play it when it was cheaper. Maybe it's the old man in me being patient enough to not play everything as soon as possible. Get off my lawn. You better watch your back. Fuck you! Or the cheap ass who's willing to shell out over a thousand dollars on computer upgrades, but not a game that isn't on sale. I'm sick of this shit! My mom's not made of money, you know! We can sum up the story pretty easily. It's forgettable. It's nothing egregiously bad, but it's just so bland that I'm surprised Gordon Ramsay doesn't show up. From a plot perspective, Lara gets an artifact, things go bad, she goes to an exotic location to fix it, fights bad guys, beats the bad guys. From a character development perspective, it's a complete rehash of its predecessor by delving into Lara's obsession with tomb raiding. By revisiting this concept, Shadow of the Tomb Raider makes a previous development completely null and void because Lara hasn't learned a damn thing. Can make the right difference. After everything that my father went through, I gave Trinity exactly what they wanted. It's all my fault. No shit, Sherlock. Lara has a smidge more of a personality in here as she dwells on the detrimental effects that she brings to those around her, but it never actually comes off as genuine in the sense of the character. She's a shell that is personifying the traits that are expected of the plot. Let's do a thought experiment. Imagine some of your favorite characters are in a bar together. If you can fully imagine how a series of conversations or interactions between these characters would play out, that means they're well-written and fleshed out people. You can't really do the same thing with Lara. Her character is treated as a vehicle for the plot to use for its own benefit. Compare this to other games that use a plot as a vehicle to drive character development, or imagine this, having a good plot and characters. Inconceivable. The only person that I cared about in the game was Lara's friend Jonah, who was a definition of the chillest BFF, while simultaneously not being afraid to call her out on her bullshit. You don't know that you caused all this, Lara! Not everything is about you! My favorite moment in the game comes early on when Lara is being his wingman. After the cutscene, you can even interact with a nearby frustrated NPC who's pissed off that Jonah swooped in on the girl he's been trying to work up the courage to talk to. Two years I've been working up to never to ask her out. I finally do. And now, who is that guy anyway? This is a good character moment. It's the exact kind of personality that the game should lean into more. Shadow of the Tomb Raider takes heavy inspiration from the critically acclaimed Uncharted 4 in regards to the pacing of its combat. That's a bad thing. While the 2013 reboot didn't have the same narrative strength of its contemporaries, it stood out on its own due to its metroidvania light progression and upgrades, as well as just mechanically feeling better to play. Shadow of the Tomb Raider feels inferior to previous releases due to its sluggishness, completely imbalanced progression systems, a redundant skill tree, incompetent enemies, and so few real combat encounters that you can practically count them on your fingers. The game supplements the lack of gun combat with an added emphasis on exploration and puzzle solving, which I admittedly enjoyed greatly for the first couple of hours. The puzzles and tombs are the game's strongest selling point, as having to sit back and analyze the machinations of the variables at play made me feel like I deserved that golden banana sticker. The banana sticker. 
how come he gets a banana sticker? Don't I get one? No, Murderface, you do not get a banana sticker, not until you have proven yourself. I initially chalked up the lack of combat due to me engaging in the vast amount of the game's side activities instead of mainlining the story. But in reality, the game just doesn't have that much combat in it. Dude, where's my combat? Dude, where's my combat? The optional tombs are the real meat and bones of the game, while the side quests are just honestly a kind of bit of a bore. Combat is paced more like an action movie, which in of itself isn't a bad idea, except that movies are typically around the 90 minute mark, whereas this game averages around 13 hours. And even when you do engage in combat, enemies are more often than not just a chore rather than a challenge. Point your stupidly overpowered assault rifle in their direction and they die almost immediately. Previous games purposely stagnated the progress in which you would obtain your arsenal and their subsequent upgrades. They were meant as Metroid-esque upgrades that you would obtain at intervals in the story for the purpose of new gameplay opportunities. It kept things fresh and entertaining. The game limited your progression so that you wouldn't become too overpowered too early on. You know that fabled thing called game balance. What is that? What the fuck is that? Shadow of the Tomb Raider opts to just plop all the weapons at your feet in the early hours with the ability to upgrade to your heart's content. I fully upgraded my assault rifle and bow before I ever ran into any serious combat scenarios. This disappointment is only compounded by the game's completely superfluous skill tree. A sizable portion of these are just for the exploration segments of the game, with the combat ones ultimately just being a slap to the face due to their limited utility in the game's rare encounters. Uncharted 4 suffers heavily from poorly paced combat scenarios, but at least it doesn't attempt to make a facade of caring about it by giving you a useless skill tree that you don't even need. One department that the game succeeds in is its stealth sections where you're stripped of your weapons and forced to improvise with the environment and items in your surroundings. It makes you stop and analyze what potential plans of attacks that you can make, while also keeping in mind spatial awareness awareness of enemies, as well as their pathways and line of sights. The climbing sections were also enjoyable in comparison to other games that emphasize it, due to its focus on player interaction. Uncharted's climbing suffers from monotony, whereas this requires input that isn't completely brain dead. And yes, I'm aware I've constantly compared this to Uncharted, and that's due to the series taking direct inspiration from it in almost every regard. Games in the industry don't exist within an isolated bubble, comparing and contrasting is human nature 101. Now let's get into the small stuff that doesn't require too much elaboration. The game is increasingly more subtle about guiding you in terms of lighting and color-coded climbable objects. This is a popular trait in games in order to efficiently guide players without having to put a giant arrow on the screen. However, leaning heavily on this has led to a gamic language as a bit too much of an explicit wink-wink, nudge-nudge situation. Shadow of the Tomb Raider uses faded white paint and objects that slightly protrude in order to guide you. It shows that you have a brain that can pick up on its clues, whereas Uncharted 2's yellow paint Paint screams, you should try climbing me. Having to mash the right stick in order to get Batman, I'm, I'm sorry, I mean Lara Vision, is annoying since it fades away the moment you move. I wouldn't mind this as much if it was mapped to a different button. My right thumb fucking hated me for playing this game. <laughs> There's also some frequent screen tearing in the upper edges, which is pretty unusual for a console game. The game is also obsessed with hiding its loading screens by having Lara slowly go through tight crawl spaces. This does create a seamless diegeticness, but it also creates a bit of a motif of hilarity because of how often they actually use the same tactic. Overall, Shadow of the Tomb Raider has solid production values, but lacks a solid personality and sense of pacing in the gameplay departments. It excels in its exploration, traversal, and puzzles, so emphasizing these even more would benefit the series, but returning the combat and progression systems to what they once were would create a more well-rounded experience that I would actually be able to recommend more wholeheartedly. As of right now, I'd say your best option is to just play it on Game Pass. Do the optional puzzles and tombs, avoid the side quests, and just know that you won't be engaging in combat that often. Overall, I'm going to give Shadow of the Tomb Raider a C. Thanks for watching my first review and analysis thing, I, I don't know. I don't really plan on reviewing every little thing that I play, but I felt strongly enough that I could elaborate on some of my points here. Uh, check out my other game design videos on my channel and drop a like and subscribe if you liked it. And you know what, feel free to leave your thoughts and comments and maybe even recommend something that you'd want covered in the future.